Welcome to this week's episode of Secrets of Martial Arts. This week I'm here with Sensei Carlo Tona from Oriental Arts Academy. Hello, Sensei. How are sensei, you? Sensei, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for coming. I really oh, appreciate you coming out here. So, you've been doing martial arts now for how long? 46 years. 46 years. Yep. And you started, where did you start? I started at, uh, at the University of Western Ontario. We ran the club there for about uh, five years and then came back up here. So in the summer times, I would come up to Sudbury because um, I, that's where the base is. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the school year, we would train down there. And oh. then finally in 1977, I came back up here and we opened up a club and, and trained and taught up here. And who did you start learn from here? Bob Delglish, who was at the time a six degree black belt. And uh, I think I was the last guy to train with him because I had seen him at uh, Laurentian University. They had uh, Chinese New Year. He was there and I trained with him before and I saw him and I went sensei and he went, yeah. And I said, do you remember me? He said, yeah. He said, I'm thinking of opening a club, he said. And I said, I'm in, I'll do all the groundwork. And that's when I started. But he died shortly after that. He, he was like, if I remember right, he was kind of recognized as the father of Goju in Canada, is he not? Uh, I, I would say yes. I would say yes. He was, uh, he was trained uh, in uh, Chitaru. He spent time with uh, Soroka Sensei in Toronto, who has, who has since passed. And uh, his strength was Goju. He trained with uh, Gogen Yamaguchi, but he had trained in, in many disciplines. Um, so you started in the early 70s. What would in the early 70s <clears throat> make someone interested? What would make you interested in studying the martial arts? I think that, that, that's really simple. What got me going was I saw a, 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 a seminar or uh, it was like a, a demonstration of two guys and I forget where it was. I think it was the Black Dragon Kung Fu guys in, in London. Uh, their ability to uh, perform the technique with speed and precision was uncanny. I was impressed with that. But I was more impressed with the fact that these guys were unbelievably powerful and fast, but they were, they were bright, they were articulate, and they were just like real gentlemen. And rather, the expectation was that, that you had street thugs, but it wasn't that at all, and that attracted me to the martial arts. Hmm. So you, have, you do three martial arts. You have black belts in three. I have a black belt in Gojuru. I have one in Chitaru and one in Jiu-Jitsu. We teach Jiu-Jitsu and Gojuru. Gojuru is hard, soft, go, Ju is hard, soft style. And Jitsu is a soft style. They call it the gentle art, but anybody that's done Jitsu knows that ripping joints apart and a temiwaza or pressure points is not fun. I never really saw anything gentle about no, it. No, nothing at all. I don't <laughs> know why they call it that. Right, well, that's amazing. Um, and your school is Oriental Arts Academy. It is so. And where is it located? It's located on uh, uh, Bellevue Avenue, 1533 Bellevue Avenue. At, uh, it used to be the old Lachie St. Church in Minna Lake. Okay. We gutted the building and built a dojo. Now, actually, for the people watching, this dojo was originally your dojo. It was so. We, we acquired this building in 1985 <coughs> from... Uh, a music studio. The guy's name was Carl Pucher. I don't think he's alive anymore. And we gutted it and all our students, uh, we, this floor we laid it by hand. We put 1,500 pound beams in here. We just gutted the place out and, and it really has a good energy. I can't believe what they've done with it. Well, you know, what? It's uh, Don has been, it's Don's dojo, Don Culligan, and, uh, and <coughs> we're so, I'm so pleased that she lets us use this. It's a real honor for me. <coughs> But uh, that, the, that she's actually working here and keeping it in martial arts, I'm, I'm sure you feel good about that. I, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, I found out about this a few months ago. One of my students said, hey, did you know that? And I went, oh my God, what a fit. It's perfect for her, I hope. And just the feel of the place is unbelievable. Well, I've been in when there's classes on, and I tell you, the energy's high. <clears throat> it's very yeah. good. I remember when Senaha Sensei came, was it 15 years ago? Mm -hmm. And we... We worked together on that, and we had him here at the dojo for a seminar for, for you. When yes. You put it on. Yes. That was fun. It was, yeah. <clears throat> it was. Um, so how many students would you have training with you at this particular time? Uh, we don't have that many. I, we've, I would say typically under, under 50. We used to have a lot more. We've lost a lot to the mixed martial arts. 
And uh, I think that's across the board. Traditional martial arts styles are, uh, have been impacted by the new wave of uh, mixed martial arts. Actually, I would, have, I would most definitely agree with you on that one. It's when I first started myself, it was, which is after you started, <laughs> the, you were already black belt when I started, but uh, um, there were only a few schools you could go to, with yours being one of them. Absolutely. When, when we started, when I, when I was teaching at Western, Western was a large university, and it was, it was really good because we had people from all over the world. Uh, we had probably 150 students. Up here we had probably 100 plus students in two, yeah. three locations. Uh, um, okay, so i just ask <laughs> one more question before go we go. Um, every style has a forte. Yes. What would you say the forte of your style is? I think, uh, I'm a little bit biased, but I believe that Goju is, is a, the style. And, and the reason I believe that is because I've been trained in hard styles, which is just linear and power. And Goju has a nice marriage between hard and soft. So you have the, the linearity and the strength of Japanese styles, yet the softness and the redirection of a Chinese style. Well, thank you very much. We're going to cut and we're going to uh, come back and since he's going to demonstrate with his students some techniques from Gozuru and Jiu Jitsu. So. Awesome. Thank you, thank Sensei. Thank you. We're back with Carlo Tonin Sensei from Oriental Arts Academy. Uh, Sensei is going to demonstrate techniques from Gozuru Karate. Good. Sensei. Thank you, Sensei. Okay, you step back a bit, please. In our style, we have techniques. Okay, we'll start off with waza. Just do it slowly, please. We have these things called waza. They're basically techniques. They're prearranged patterns to develop timing, coordination, speed, skill, all the rest of the stuff. Okay, bow, re. Good. And proceed. Go. Just do it a few times, gentlemen. Okay, what you'll see is when Alex and Colton are doing the technique, what you'll see is it's done slowly and as time progresses it goes faster. So you develop the skill and the power and at the end, at a basic level, and at the end you're learning how to block on pressure points and how to deflect line of force and application of technique. Good. Thank you. So now we'll do it just a little bit quicker. Okay, just hold off for a second. Now you're, they're in set position, which we call kamai position. And the concentration is there. They're very relaxed, almost like a street fight. Everything resembles what happens in battle. And the key is to ma maintain your focus and to react to what is happening, not to what you think is going to happen. Again. One more time, please. Good. And one final time. Good. Thank you. Okay, step back a bit. Okay, we'll do. Now we're going to do a traditional goju kata called seyunchen. You will see that some of the techniques in seyunchen are they look flowery and they may or may not resemble what you believe to be fighting techniques. But you'll have to keep in mind that when these te techniques evolved, these styles evolved, martial arts wasn't really that popular. And for you to teach martial arts uh, was, was or could be a dangerous thing, in fact, life-threatening. So the techniques were disguised as other things that made them look like dances. So gentlemen, when you're ready, just slowly, please. Uh, make it medium speed. As they're doing the form, you'll see depth of stances. Gojuru is particularly strong on low stances and fluid technique. You'll see the circular blocks and strikes, fingertip strikes. This is a strong Chinese influence. The Goju has a lot of Japanese, but 
the initial art came from, probably from India through China, and the Okinawan masters learned the Chinese techniques. They're, these are the circular techniques. The lunges forward and the punches are the striking linearity of Japanese martial arts. Nice archers forms exploding forward. Each one of these <laughs> techniques has a hidden meaning. And there's usually three <laughs> levels, basic intermediate understanding. The basic technique is just pulling it off. The intermediate one addresses coordination, cadence, and the rest of the stuff. Up. And the advance addresses line of attack, speed and power, and where exactly to strike. So we're not just punching someplace in the body or punching to the head. The points on the body are very specific because they create or elicit a, a specific response, usually a lot of pain. The intent is not to break the body, but to stop the threat. All right, so maybe right now we could go through some of the, what we call bunkai, or breaking the form apart so that you can see the meaning of the, te of the technique. And in that, okay, Alex, come forward. Right here. Uh, no, we'll take it this way. Good. So, Colton, off to the side. So you see at the beginning of the, f at the, beginning of the form, it opens up and the hands go down. Okay, and as they start to come up right here, that to you just looks like something that's flowery and has no meaning, but that's not true. All right, step off, please. Good, bow. When we're coming down and coming up to the side, it is a two hand grab. When this stuff goes down, it is typically a question of interpretation. This is one interpretation, there are many. A lot of people say, well, there's only one or two. There are many interpretations. So from here, it's expand hand, come up, and here, set, pull, <laughs> then down the body, bam! Right? We'll try it again. One, expand, two, three, lock the wrist, turn, pull. Pressure point on the arm, strike to the arm, bam! Turn the other way around. The second one here is at the end one, two, archer form. Okay, quickly go to it, yeah. Okay, and go to the next one. Archer form here, it looks like something flowery. What it is is simply this. Punch comes in, you slip it, two defense mechanisms. You slip the technique, you pick it up here, you see the archer form here, you pick it up, and it's pull, strike to the groin, arm, <laughs> and you can control the arm here. Okay, go. One, same time. Two, one, two, three. Did you wear a cup? I said so. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have another one? Yes. So now, coming forward on the same technique. One, two. The one before this was, was a little more advanced. This is more, more of a basic technique. So, lined up, technique is coming in from here. I come in, strike, clear, and hit. So you hit forehead. Subject to interpretation. You hit forehead, cheekbone, all certain pressure points. You're hitting, boom! Okay, back up. Here, one, striking. Hitting pressure point here. One, boom, bang! Bang! Okay, good. Okay, back out in the kata. Both. Okay, do it again, one more time. How much time do we have? Okay, you see, this is where the hand grab is and the release. 
There's three of those in the beginning. And all these techniques, you'll be seeing the hands come up now and grouping together. This is picking up a fist, joint locking, locking a joint, groin strike, groin strike. Same on that side. Archer's form, this is where you saw it, and leaping forward. The block, the strike, turning. And you can see it requires coordination and strength. The more advanced you are, the more the expectation that the technique is clean and perfect. Mindset. At the end of the cut, you see the eyes going forward Thank and you interpreting. Very much, gentlemen. Thank you. That was great, Sensei. When we come back, Sensei's going to be doing some more techniques of Goju as well as some Kobodo or weaponry. <laughs> We're back with Carlos Sensei, and Sensei was going to be demonstrating this time some self-defense techniques, and then afterwards you're going to do some bow, a bow kata, I understand, yes. some weaponry. Yes. So, take Good. it away, awesome. Sensei. Thank you, Sensei. We're going to do some very simple self-defense techniques that they should be self-explanatory, and the key thing for self-defense is just to get away from the threat. Get away from the threat. That's all. Uh, if you want to take it further, if you have multiple attacks, multiple people attacking you, you may have to take it to a different conclusion. But if you get grabbed, get out of it, get out of dodge, as they used to say in the cowboy days. All right, so very simple, straight arm, straight arm grab, which means his left, no, make it the other side, please. His left to right. So from here, this works for anyone, uh, uh, men, women, and children. From here, you work towards the thumb because the thumb is the weakest aspect. It's very important that your mindset is correct, that your center is low, and that you're focused on getting out of the technique. If you're turning and it doesn't work, then we go to the second plan and we hit the nerve on top of the arm, and uh, that will help you out. So basically, you're turning. If you want, slap the body and just get away. It's just that simple. There's no one turning that boom, boom. There's none of that. We don't need that. We just want to get away from being hurt. All right, so again, straight arm grab, one, expand the hand, and just step back and turn and run. Right? We'll do a cross arm grab now. From here, this is pretty simple. What you want is the bend in the arm, the bend in the arm, kind of like a Z pattern. You trap the hand, trap the hand, just lean it on top, and you go here. Baby finger down, and there you go. It doesn't look like much, but I can assure you he's hurting because it feels like the tendons and the muscles are ripping off the bone. So here. And then you can control up to here and come up to here and make him cry. <coughs> Who's your daddy? <coughs> yeah, okay. All right, so again, one more time. No, straight arm grab. Straight arm, deflect, deflect it off to the side. Pull, strike if you need, get out of the way. Cross arm, one, two, and lock. <coughs> It's pretty, it's pretty loud, eh? <laughs> okay, we'll do uh, a choke. A choke from here, we'll take this side. Choking the body, simple technique, is just coming over the top from here. Locking him out. <laughs> Self-defense can't be complicated. It's not like we do this and do that, it's just simple, get out of the way. So the grab, again, one from here, if it's a choke, from here, you can slap and push him away, and then you get out of the way. If it's a grab on this side, from here, introduction, always good manners, hip touch, and from here, over. Okay, you don't need to do the final part, I'm just doing that to be fancy, but the key here is Distract the brain. He's very strong and overpowering me. I can't. He's too strong. So take the brain away. Take the hand over the top. Hey! Drag him hey! down. Get up. Good. And where else are we? Okay. So now, what we're going to do, prepare the bowl, please. Sensei Obertang. We'll be doing a traditional 
Okinawan bokata. This bokata is from the Matayoshi Kubodo, which is a style that is only weapons. It's been around for a few hundred years, and it's been passed down to us through, through one of our students who lived in Okinawa for a few years. I don't know exactly how long. And he was taught by Gaikia Sensei, who has now passed it on, but he took it from the main instructor's son from, to the main instructor, which started around the 1900. So it was like Shinko Matayoshi to Shimpo Matayoshi to Gaikia Sensei and taught to one of our senior black belts, Christian Gardner, and passed on to us. So this kata is quite old. Go ahead. The Matayoshi style is very different in the sense that it is only a weapon style. Most martial arts carry, they do open hand and then they have a weapons as a sideline. The <laughs> Ma Matayoshi style is weapons and they carry open hand on the side. It is very unique and very strong. You won't see powerful, you won't see flippy, fancy stuff, linear, strong, and direct. Bokata are very tricky because traditionally you make a mistake and you're dead. It's just that simple. So the attention to detail is very important, is very important and the line of attack is as well. One more time, please. Notice again the depth of stance. Traditionally, in weapons forms, the stances are higher. The strikes are there, block, strike to the leg, pick up the leg, strike to the body like a pool cue strike to a pot body, sweeping up the leg, striking on the head, driving into the body again, blocking, deflecting. That jump up was a jump to avoid another weapon. So that completes us. Thank you very much. That was fantastic. So, well, Sensei, I would really like to take this chance to thank you and your students for coming My to help us thank out. My pleasure. Thank you, Sensei. We so, so much appreciate it to be so, part of this. I hope that you, uh, I hope that you enjoyed Secrets of the Martial Arts this episode. Um, Sensei's been doing it for an incredibly long time, and this was an amazing demonstration. Thank you. Would you uh, like to say yeah, in, uh, anything would, in parting? Or? I, I would like to say thank you to uh, Tom Orndorff for helping in the production. Just step off, come inside, for helping in the production to Sensei Alex Obertain and Senpai uh, Colton Goebel. Alex is going to go for his third dan this year. He's been with us for 20 years. Colton's been training for 11 years. I'd like to say at the end of the day that the martial arts has been a wonderful journey, right? It's available to all, but only a select few do it. And it's a, it's a good thing. It's a lot of hard work with a many downs and a few ups, but we are martial artists. And the bottom line is intent and survival. It's really not a game. So okay, that's well, about thank it. you very much once again, and thank you for watching this week's episode of Secrets of Martial Arts, and we shall see you next week. Mm -hmm.